And so uh, well, I, I feel at home. Um, for the formalities, Oscar Seiger on behalf of Elsa Hinostros at DTI Export, myself and my professional association, I respectfully request two minutes to rebut to the arguments made by the appellee. Simply put, they've conceded that what they stapled to a threatening letter is a draft motion. That's their concession, a draft motion. This court does not recognize a draft motion as complying with the safe harbor requirements. This court in Nathan versus Bates and Anchor Towing said, we are going to strictly construe the safe harbor provision to require well, this is this is a motion with letter, so it's not just a motion, correct? It's and not the, even and the letter a motion. specifically refers to the motion. It, it refers to an unsigned, undated, but it refers to the motion that accompanies the letter, correct? And the letter is signed. The letter is There's signed. There's no question that this motion and the letter are are sent together, and the letter refers to the motion, and the motion puts you on notice, correct? Respectfully, no, because In what this way is, does it not put you on notice? This is no different than a threatening letter in Nathan or Anchor Towing. A threatening letter with the motion. The motion's there. With an unsigned motion that also demanded a relief that is simply not afforded under 57105.4. They demanded a dismissal with prejudice, a dismissal with prejudice of the entire <coughs> action also, but not including attorney's fees, which is what this is all about, correct? They demanded sanctions, and the only way to alleviate the imposition of the sanctions if, was if you accepted the offer. If I accepted a dismissal with prejudice, which would if have. If you accepted the offer. If I accepted their offer, but their but offer. Instead, you continued to litigate for four years on claims that you knew or should have known you could not prevail on. I, I respectfully disagree. Tell and me it, why not. Well, and, and then I'm, I'm going to answer some other point about the defects in the motion and, and the letter. Well, why, First don't you, why don't you get to the, your disagreement with Judge Rathenberg? Uh, understood. This court has already ruled that at worst, the litigation on the breach of fiduciary and legal malpractice claims was premature. Not that it was meritless. That action is proceeding now before Judge Dresnick. With regard to the replevin, it was a he said, she said as to whether or not a box of documents was furnished back on May 7, 2004. Moreover, and, and this is a critical point. Your client admitted that the federal government had those documents and the federal government either lost or destroyed them. Not all of them. And this is a very significant distinction. I've never used the word all. The docket sheet below reflects that Mr. Diaz himself furnished documents. No, it's not, it's not worthy of lawyers to split hairs of that kind. It's not splitting hairs, Your Honor. This is a very salient distinction. It would be one thing if characterized by, as the, from the appellee that I said. Didn't you go to trial? Didn't you go to trial four years after the offer? To, to, to get back a replevin when you knew that 10 days before, the, uh, 10 days before, or 10 hours before, that the, uh, proper, that the papers had been destroyed? No, Your Honor, and, and this is the point. There was a confiscation and then Why a did you ex What did you expect if you had won the case? I would have expected... You would a have return the of the documents. You would have expected the papers, correct? I would have expected a return of the documents that Mr. Diaz had in his possession, most notably proven to by what, to his... To what end? I beg your pardon? To what end? How would that have helped Mr. Diaz financially or otherwise? Ms. Hinostrosa, at that point in time, at the inception of the suit, had wanted to re revive the business that she had. The documents also had some value in proving the merits of the underlying case. I, I, I hope this court will not blur the distinction. What you were really seeking was a return of the forfeited funds, correct? That and the documents. The return of the forfeited funds were in the breach of... Um, but in terms of the forfeited funds, there was a motion pending for reconsideration when the Diaz law firm was, was terminated. That correct? motion was Back pending... Back in 2004, it was pending. Well, the then file was closed. New counsel was hired in 2005. Did new counsel do anything to pursue that motion and have it heard 
in order to a, attempt to obtain the, the funds that were forfeited? Not at that point, but there was also an indication not, that the not file... Not at any point until 2010, correct? 2009. The file was closed for two years. There had been no activity by three years by Mr. Diaz. Remember, the order... How, how could the Diaz firm be uh, breach their fiduciary duty or be negligent in some way for not pursuing... Uh, the return of those funds when there was a motion for reconsideration filed during the pendency of the Diaz firm's yes. representation and that subsequent counsel never did anything to pursue. What, he, what obligation did the Diaz firm have to pursue Mr. that issue Diaz after was, being terminated? Mr. Diaz was counsel for three years while a pending motion for reconsideration sat. His client is losing the benefit of the interest on Well, a, then I guess new counsel is even more... Uh, negligent or because well, the new I, counsel I, didn't pursue it until I, 2009 I disagree and 10. because he allowed the file to close without filing a notice of ripeness. He was originally entrusted to file motion or either administrative proceeding or judicial proceeding and did not do so. We're, we're back to the merits again of the whole case. Well, and, and unfortunately, we're way beyond that. And, and this and, is this is now I don't know what number appeal here, this but is now. Fourth. Well, now we're on fees. Understood. And, and again, this Court has demanded strict compliance with the safe harbor provisions. This Court and the 11th Circuit does not recognize dismissals with prejudice. If I had dismissed with prejudice, I would have forfeited a client's claim that has merit. It withstood a summary judgment motion. It withstood motions to dismiss. We are talking about $140,000 plus interest. If you dismiss... Of course, you dismiss it with prejudice because you accepted the offer. If you didn't accept the offer, you don't dismiss it, which and, you didn't and, do. And, and the, which and you did not do. Because I'm not obligated to, to affect a dismissal of a meritorious case. Well, the, if you take money the for it, if, you, if they offered you a million dollars in return for an, a dismissal with prejudice, Either you accept a million dollars or you don't, but if you do, you have to dismiss it with prejudice. And if you don't, and you don't get a million dollars, you have to pay attorney's fees. But here there was no inducement. There was nothing of value offered to the client. The meritorious case that was pursued was replevin for return of documents for which a jury found already uh, was not wrongful. With misstated testimony. The Remember, jury found that they weren't wrongfully retained, and that was affirmed on appeal, correct? The, the finding of the jury was that Mr. Diaz never had those documents. The jury found that the Diaz firm did not unlawfully retain, or did not wrongfully retain the documents. The question that the jury answered was, were these personal property? Mr. Diaz testified that he never had Mr. these Diaz documents. Mr. Diaz was not believed. Mr. Diaz was not believed. Well, he was believed. He was. I think he was believed, he was believed. Be because they, they, he was believed, but admitted, but under false testimony. Okay, but that's over. That's, that's over. That's over. Then there well, was a motion to vacate final judgment. Understood. You lost there too. But I'm answering the responses to whether or not okay. the claims we'll were let you were, save. You've got two minutes. We'll let you save two minutes Thank for you. rebuttal. Good morning, Your Honors. May it please the Court. Jennifer Ruiz. On Don't smile. Don't smile so much. M Ms. Ruiz, tell us why you're entitled to fees. Why we should affirm under an abuse of discretion standard. Defeats. Because the record in this case exemplifies the very purpose. But under what basis do you get fees? Under what, under 57, for the legal malpractice portion of it, the finding of entitlement was twofold. On the legal malpractice uh, portion of the case, uh, a proper motion was served uh, on Mr. Seiger and the plaintiffs in the underlying case, delineating why the case had no merit. Specifically, that the and, underlying case. And why case, do you get them on, on the replevin? On the replevin, uh, after we conducted a trial and there was scorched earth litigation on these documents, uh, once we figured out that the underlying case had been re reopened and we read and printed all the documents that had been filed with the federal court, we discovered that months prior to the trial, uh, appellants had made a representation to the federal court that the bulk, that all of the documents that were confiscated in the investigation had been lost or destroyed. But Upon is, discovering that... This is, th these fees were not awarded below for the malfeasance, on the malfeasance uh, ground of nasty lawyering. They, or, or was it? Or were they? 
for, and I apologize, they were, they, Your Honor. They were awarded on the offer of settlement, weren't they? Not offer of settlement. The fees, the, the entitlement was twofold. So we had the 57, legal malpractice. 57105 for the legal malpractice portion and the inequitable conduct doctrine because that was the only remedy what, left what, for the court. What was the inequitable conduct? The inequitable conduct. Was that in the order that's now on a review? Yes, it is. It's in, uh, it, it goes through the specific. The trial court actually made very specific findings of fact of the record before it. The trial court judge in this case had actually presided over every portion of this case. This was a judge that ruled in the initial motion to dismiss where we argued that the underlying case had not been reopened, sat through hearing after hearing, motion after discovery motion uh, with the documents, sat through trial, actually warned uh, appellants prior to commencing trial uh, that they weren't seeking any damages in the Replevin case, that they, most they would get is a document that says give, them back, give her back her documents, which Mr. Diaz testified again and again he did not have. So you can imagine the trial court judge's surprise or shock and awe when we disclosed to him after the trial that prior to the trial, appellants had represented in another judicial proceeding before the federal court that those documents had been lost or destroyed. And uh, because there was a, no other applicable st uh, statute to provide the fees at the time because the trial was over, it had been well past the verdict, the date of the verdict, he relied upon his inherent authority under the Inequitable Conduct Doctrine, which Mokley stands for and provides the trial court with that authority. And if I could just address the unsigned motion part, I think it's uh, interesting that he, as, as your honors noted, uh, appellants don't offer any explanation as to why they did not, they waited until after they lost summary judgment to reopen the underlying case. And that's because the record provides only one explanation, bad faith exactly what the trial court find in very specific findings. And as far as the unsigned motion, um, counsel and appellants don't offer a single case that says that an unsigned motion is fatal to the notice provision in the safe harbor section of 57105 subsection 4. And that's because it would completely undermine the purpose of the statute, which is for the parties to police themselves, uh, preserve judicial resources and reduce unnecessary litigation costs. And this continued for four more years. Exactly. Not 21 days. Exactly. This was, he had 1,710 days before that motion, between the time that motion was served and then motion was filed. He can't say now that he was confused as to when uh, that, that the defendants were going to be seeking fees against him for a meritless case. So we request that your honors uh, not disturb the trial court's specific findings of fact and affirm. Thank you. I want to address Judge Schwartz's point as far as the inequitable conduct. This, this court is right. There's a solitary award. So on one level, there's a violation of Mokley because the court order didn't differentiate out what fees were allegedly tied to the alleged bad faith. Here's the bad faith that um, this court found. I, I received a false response to a one request to produce. I filed two motions to compel. Both were granted and both produced additional documents and in a certification that additional documents would be found. How can a motions that are granted be considered vexing, bad faith, or meritless? The second thing, and this happens time and time again, my colleague says that I- What was the I, date that that occurred? There, the date that what occurred, Your Honor? That you got these additional documents. In one time was June of 2008, and the second was June or July of 2009. And that's critical because in his affidavit filed in support of the motion for summary judgment is replevant, he says, I've already given all the documents. Yes, you've given not, not the documents that I asked for in replevant, but the ones called for in the request to produce, but only after two court orders. I won both motions to compel. The second, nowhere in this record is there a statement that I use the word all or the universe of documents to describe what the government did. They continually blur and impute the word all. Obviously, some documents survived. Those were the documents that Mr. Diaz had in his possession by his own admissions in the docket sheet in the federal court and what the assistant U.S. attorney said. I have a right to rely on that. Those were the documents that I asked for in paragraph 31 of the replevin. They haven't answered why they're entitled to fees when in conclusion, under 1.525. Vacate the order in its entirety at a minimum, remand to separate out what was bad faith since there was no bad faith from the 57105. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank, Thank you both.